Do we have the first open module that can beat GPT-4 Turbo in coding tasks? Hey everyone, my name is Vendelin, and in this video we're going to have a look at DeepSeeker's Coder V2, and we're going to take it for a spin. So this model is the release of DeepSeeker's second version of the model, and the DeepSeeker Coder V2 is actually a fine-tuned version of the original DeepSeeker V2 model. And the authors claim, at least in the, their tweet, that this model excels in coding and math, beats GPT-4 Turbo, Code 3 Opus, Gemini 1.5 Pro, and Code Astro. And it supports 338 programming languages, and it allows us to have 128k of context length. And the model is actually fully open sourced in two sizes, 230 billion parameter model and 16 billion parameter models. The authors also published their benchmarks, and this is the chart that compares the DBC Coder V2 to GPT-4 Turbo, Gemini 1.5 Pro, and etc. And as you can see on math-related encoding benchmarks, it looks like this model is performing very well, uh, at least very well compared to pretty much everything and just on some tasks as you can see on the live code bench and SAWE bench it is performing worse compared to GPT-4 and Gemini 1.5 but on the other benchmarks it appears to be performing at its best but of course take these benchmarks with a grain of salt not until we see the actual feedback of the community and the leaderboard on the chat LMS the Deep6 Coder V2 GitHub repository contains information about the code license, and this model is licensed under, or the code for this model is licensed under MIT, or the model weights, if you will, are licensed under their custom license. So if you want to actually use this model, consult the license and probably your legal advisors. And one important thing about this model is that it is actually a mixture of expert model, and as we've already seen, the rear two versions 16 billion and 236 billion parameter models and for the smaller one you are actually using only 2.4 billion active parameters while the larger model uses 21 billion parameters uh, during inference keep in mind that it, it's going to be still hard to put the large model on a consumer grade gpu so uh, fortunately the authors are also exposing an api which uh, you can use in order to run the large model or get inference from it. Another important thing is that they're publishing their needle in a haystack test and it appears that this model is performing perfectly on it. But this is uh, somewhat of a not that good uh, test compared to modern LLMs. And keep in mind that this in practice might not be as good as this test suggests. The GitHub repository also contains a list of supported languages and as you can see the actual model supports a lot of languages probably whatever they can get from GitHub and other sources for programming languages and you can see that this model is really has really expanded on the first version uh, probably some esoteric languages will be here like let's say Kubol yeah Kubol is here uh, let's see Fortran yeah, Fortran is here. And yeah, probably you might find your favorite language right here. I have the Deep Seekers Coder V2 running within their website, and there is a playground where you can try out the model. And this is going to be the first prompt. I want the model to write a Fibonacci number calculator, and instead of an integer, it should return a string of penguin emojis that match the actual number that is going to be returned. So let's see what we have here. Yeah, it. I know that I haven't I really said that I want a Python function, but the model chose the Python language probably because it has a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, code that is written in Python. And let's actually get this code and we're going to go through the Fibonacci sequence uh, table just to check some of the numbers whether or not those are correct and here i have a google Club notebook in which i'm going to be using this as a scratch pad uh, let's see if we print the fifth one uh, 
let's see get the response from that uh, you see that the result is actually penguins uh, which is cool and for the fifth number we should actually have just five penguins but it appears that this is not the correct answer uh, let's try to get for one one is correct as you can see from the table two again correct and let's try three this should be two but uh you can see that the fibonacci number for n of three is equal to two not three so the model did an error right here the next one is going to be just a simple function that takes a csv file and converts it into an sqlite 3 database something that i uh, do on some occasions and this is the prompt write a function that takes a path to a csv file and converts the csv file to a sqlite database and note that i'm not again specifying that i want python uh, but it appears that the actual model is uh, choosing python you can probably say that this path is a hint to the language that i want to use but still uh, this appears to be choosing python and here is the function uh, you can see that it actually put out some uh, default parameters it didn't actually put any annotations for the typing something that that would probably do uh, but even though that is the case uh, it is ensuring that the provided path is a path object which is great it has some comments not a doc, doc string unfortunately uh yeah let's let's try it out actually okay i'm going to get the code uh and here i'm going to essentially call the sample and i have a file called ds underscore salaries.csv uh, i want the table to be called salaries and this to be salaries db and i have executed the function yeah it looks like that it created actually the salaries okay so if i try to connect and get the cursor to the database let me try to see uh, whether or not salaries.db okay so this is the cursor and if i execute select star from salaries limit five let's say i have a typo uh, and if i do cursor fetch all uh, let's see if this completes yeah it appears to be working and let's see do we have the data as we expect yeah it appears to be working so i would give this function a pass so i'm going to continue with the same csv file at uh, this time around i'm going to give it a sample of the data and yeah i'm going to annotate the start and the end of the data and let's see what is the prompt create a plot for experience level versus salary in usd each data point must be covered based on the remote ratio here is sample of the data and this is the actual data set that i'm going to use uh, demo salaries and if we go to the viewer uh, probably this should be a bit better uh, you can see that we have roughly 3.76 thousands of examples here we have salaries for different uh, type of job titles and you can see that we have experience level salary in usd uh, remote ratio etc so this is pretty much uh, what we have in this data set and if i run this prompt uh, it says that it's going to be using uh, python's matplotlib 
I want with pandas. Okay, so it's giving us the correct imports. I really like that it is actually uh, structuring out the output as somewhat of a tutorial. So you actually understand what is happening under the hood. Uh, this far, this is looking great. Uh, yeah, and it looks like that he's going to be creating a figure, doing some scatter plot calls, adding some additional information along with all of the required libraries that we are going to need. Uh, note that it is actually using for the scatter pot itself, it is using Seaborn. Uh, yeah, the import is here. Uh, but within the introduction, it didn't say anything about Seaborn, so this is uh, interesting. Uh, let's see if this actually works. Okay, so I'm going to get the imports. The actual data I'm going to load from our CSV file. Yes, underscore salaries.csv. And then the plotting code itself. Let's see if we get the plot from here. Yeah, it, it should be working. I, I guess that I have all of the dependencies installed. Yeah, it looks like that it did exactly what I wanted. Uh, and it even covered out uh, with the legend. Yeah, it, it did call the legend for the remote ratio. Another really useful task that I often delegate to LOMs is a refactoring of some code, uh, especially if it is uh, somewhat of a narrow context. So here I'm going to show you an example. This is a source code of one of my project to it crafter. And here I'm going to ask the model to extract a data class called event from the code and use it. And I'm going to be passing in this LOM callback handler. And here we can see that we have this event and then this event right here. So if I get this and essentially paste it in here. Yeah, it says that to extract a data class code event from the provided code, we can define the event class to encapsulate the common attributes. So it noted that actually the attributes are repeating. And this created this data class. It did uh, this time around, it did the import for the typing, probably because it already needed those. Uh, and then, yeah, it appears that it has created the event here and it used the asdict function from the data class, which actually didn't import. So I think I didn't, it did an error right here. Ah, so it looks like that it actually did fix the error on itself and it says, yeah, this is really peculiar. Make sure to import asdict from the data quest if it is no, not already imported. So I would say that this is a pass. So this is it for this video. We took a look at DeepSeeker's Coder V2 and how does it handle a couple of coding tasks. All of those tasks were in Python, of course but uh, you can feel free to try out the model in other languages and let me know down into the comments how well does it do. For example, I'm really interested in JavaScript and TypeScript, so if some of you have some experience with that, that would be really interesting. I can't wait to see this model on the leaderboard on the LMCs Arena for the coding uh, tasks, and hopefully this model or Another one is going to be a model that we can use to replace the VS Code Autopilot and help a write within VS Code to write some code. So thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.